Hello and welcome to The Federal. You're watching Off the Beaten Track, a program in which we take a 360 degree view of an issue. We all know that the elections, the Lok Sabha elections and the few assembly elections recently concluded and the results were announced on the 4th of June. A fairly startling and unexpected uh, result, given the kind of uh, expectation that the BJP is going to sweep through and that NDA uh, would have a target of what was said by the Prime Minister Narendra Modi as 400 plus, the BJP itself being uh, beyond the two-third mark at 370, nothing like that happened. But we are not going to be talking about the election results and analyze them. Instead, we are going to be talking about the fact that these elections were held in the backdrop of very consistent alienation and, uh, you know, the targeting of Muslims and their vilification religious minorities, but mainly the Muslims and the Christians. Muslims even more than the Christians. So we will be talking about it that has this verdict in some way opened the door or let a ray of light come in. That is what we are going to be talking about. And we will be talking to Tanvir Ejaz, Professor of Political Science in Delhi University. Uh, welcome to the show, Tanveer. It's a real delight to be speaking to you for something which is actually very central to the core of our coexistence. That is what no, we are thank you. talking about. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me in your show. And it's, 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 uh, it's a pleasure talking to you. Yeah. Now, in a recent article, you wrote that the verdict of 2024 has been a bit reassuring for the Muslims. This is a mag an article you wrote in one of the magazines here, the Outlook magazine. But after several incidents in Chhattisgarh, incidents of attacks on Muslims in Chhattisgarh, Madhya Pradesh, even Telangana, why even in Vadodara, Gujarat, you know, there has been an incident which has been reported that the Hindu residents of a government colony have, are up in protests because one of the flats has been allotted to a Muslim woman. Now, after all these things, do you still think that this verdict is a bit reassuring or that uh, the results has come, but nothing really is changing on the ground? Yeah, I mean, uh, it's one can say that it's the aftermath of the, uh, the verdict, right? So immediate uh, response coming from some of the groups, vigilant groups uh, who have taken it you know, uh, the verdict, they have taken it in terms of that they have lost the election because of Muslims. So therefore, the immediate sort of, you know, uh, revenge or maybe maybe sort of uh, uh, fight back, you know, and, and, and of course, you know, uh, uh, yesterday I was I was listening to uh, listening on television that there was one MP who was saying in Bihar that uh, we would not be helping Muslims anymore now, you know. Because they have not voted us, so a representative, political representative, who should represent the whole uh, constituency, saying that uh, that because they did not, I mean, it's it's very clear out, uh, 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 you know, in the public domain that how uh, the uh, leaders or, or or the candidates from from the uh, BJP, you know, how they how they respond, a candidate. From the NDA, of course, you know now because yes. there, there is some sort of an alliance over there, uh, uh, not only in terms of so they they are they are sort of trying to the NDA alliance, the other parties, you know, they are sort of trying to uh, have a convergence on the ideological framework with which the NDA has to work. So mm -hmm. therefore, you know, I mean, this is the aftermath. What I'm seeing is, uh, uh, but of course, you know, in the long term or or in a larger sense, because BJP doesn't have a majority of its own and it has to, it's a coalition uh, government and there would be a lot of bargaining, pressures, pulls. Uh, so, so there is sort of, you know, I mean, I would not say uh, that there is a large collective sigh of relief, but there is a sort of, because of course, Muslims were also scared about the fact that if they get uh, what they what they are seeking that is 400 plus or maybe you know I mean if BJP gets 370 plus then of course uh, uh, it would be it would be really dangerous for them so so in that sense there is a sigh of a relief okay. and and of course there are Muslims are very cautious about the fact that how things are moving further you know I mean 
uh, it's a matter of concern once again that the aftermath is is of the verdict is is showing that it's it's making it quite clear that that Muslims who do not vote for for BJP are getting the brunt of it. In fact, uh, you know the incident to which you were drawing your attention to the statement made by the MP from Bihar is actually from the Janta Dal U, and a day after that. Uh, Another BJP lawmaker, Giriraj Singh, you know, who is a fairly senior leader of the party, has also said that the Muslims don't vote for me. Uh, the JDU leader said that the Muslims and the Yadavs don't vote for me. So this is becoming, uh, you know, what you rightly pointed out, that they are actually beginning to share the same kind of an out, you know, worldview. Even though the Janta Dal U at one point, you know, used to take great pride in having uh, you know, a fair amount of support uh, from among the Muslims. Now, within the Muslims community, you know, there is, you know, at one level, there is this hope for the for peaceful coexistence. On the other side, there is this constant fear that they will be targeted on the basis of their religious identity. Now, and this has never been more acutely felt than in the last 10 years. Now, how has this sentiment, you know, uh, you know, been articulated by uh, the people within the community? You know, what has been the sense? You know, it is actually very difficult for to speak from the other side, if if so, I can so say, uh, to try to understand that what goes on within the Muslim community's mind. You would like to know? Yeah, I think. Uh... The Muslim mind in India, of course, you know, I mean, there's a lot of stereotypes which are which mm. are being associated with Muslims, right? And those stereotypes, basically, they are being whipped because of because of the you know uh, the idea of Islamophobia, right? Right. And Islamophobia is 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 something which is very much inherent within the whole Hindu project. So so therefore, you know, if 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 a a political party wants to carry forward its Hindutva agenda, uh, it will have to whip up Islamophobia, right? And Islamophobia, right, uh, at the at the basic level, it promotes hate, right? It promotes hate, it promotes the binary between us and them, it promotes uh, rancor, and, and, and of course, this further leads to a lot of discrimination, at the social level, at the political level, even at the institutional level, right? Uh, particularly in terms of uh, jobs in the market and uh, professions and whole lot of uh, things, you know. Particularly in the right. in the public arena, you know, there is this kind of this kind of uh, uh, segregation and and sort of sort of uh, discrimination and therefore animosity uh, uh, is is engendered. Now, the Muslim psyche, of course, you know, for them. I think, I think, you know, I mean, just imagine that for the rest of the uh, people, uh, democracy would mean elections and therefore they, they look forward to elections, right? Muslims, mm. uh, uh, they are not very happy, you know, with the electoral process, you know, because they know that it is this process that leads to their subjugation, right? Right. Uh, uh, so, so for them, you know, for Muslims, I, I, you know, particularly, I have not seen many Muslims being very enthusiastic about voting, right? Whereas rest right. of the community, other 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 communities, they are happy that look, we have got a new chance. It's a matter of right. It, um, it it's a matter of uh, you know your political right. But Muslims, they know that they 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 have a problem in exercising their political right because they exercise their political right out of sheer fear, right? And, and right. it is it is the exercise of the fear. So for Muslim mind, you know, the first thing that comes up largely, you know, is hmm. about uh, to get up system or a party or a, a gov government, you know, which would uh, make them secure at least, physically secure them. Right. right. I mean, look at look at the look at the you yourself said, you know, I mean, just after the verdict, there has been a continuous, you know, this is what. Uh, some some Paul Brass has called it as institutionalized right system where you have violence, right? Uh, Sudha Pai calls it as uh, institu institutionalized everyday communalism, right? That's right. that's what, what takes place, you know? I mean, 
uh, some get noticed, but most of these kind of small little violence doesn't get noticed, right? Yeah. At village level, urban level. So therefore, their concern is is about security, and there and on the basis only one one point agenda they have largely. And once they feel that yes, of course they might get secured, then they move on to the other points like you know how they would. Uh, get the opportunity in terms of getting jobs or in terms of you know how their rights can be enshrined or how their rights can be protected right you know uh, would you say that there is in you know a state led exclusion you know they i'm drawing your attention to this incident which happened in madhya pradesh where the houses of several muslims were demolished uh, because it was alleged that they were storing beef in the uh, in their home now, obviously, this this such an act, you know, of demolition of the houses has been done without actually establishing by a scientific process whether it is uh, what was stored in the house was whether it was uh, the meat of a cow or that of a buffalo or that of a goat or sheep or any other meat, you know, any other animal product. So, what does this show, and what message does it send to Muslims in other parts of the country? I mean, it, 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 it gives them the message that there's a huge sense of alienation, right? I mean, right. on the one hand, there is this demand for belongingness to the state, right? Right. Or belongingness to the nation as such. Right. But how, how look at the way how state is being constituted by the nation, right? Or rather, rather, you know, in, in the case of India, it is not the nation which is constituting the state but it is the state which is constituting the nation so mm -hmm. in india it is a case of state nation rather than nation state and why i'm saying so is because of the fact that look at the way how bulldozer justice so muslims are looking for social justice right so look at the way how bulldozer justice is is taking place you know it is not happening uh, across you know and uh, 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 it is it is violation of the rule of law it is violation of the constitution it is violation of the sense of the proportionality as far as as the justice is concerned you know and and i, I i'm really very worried about the fact that that you know suppose somebody keeps uh, uh, allegedly you know uh, 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 beef in in the fridge right why why the kids of that family so the whole family gets uprooted right, right. so so what is the what is the uh, crime of let's say a 12 year old girl in that family why she should be bereft of who gets homeless house and she becomes homeless right so therefore you know one will have to think about this that what kind of I mean, justice system, Supreme right. Court, the court system has to look, take, take cognizance into it. And I'm afraid there is no PIL on that, you know, because this boils down to the fact that the whole family gets the punishment where the wrong, supposedly, you know, I mean, of course, that may have been. needs to be inquired. See, so may have been done by one person. Uh, and of course, the law, law is there. Law must take its own course. You know, the, the punishment should be meted out in terms of the kind of... Uh, offense that is made so offense and mm -hmm. and 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 the punishment is uh, i mean they are not commensurate with each other it doesn't commensurate with each other so the bulldozer justice is is directly on their physical existence so therefore security becomes so important for muslims uh, in this country that uh, uh, and they don't get houses you know uh, for rent yeah. and 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 uh, look at the way how ghettoization takes place it's yes. not because muslims they want to go and live in in ghettos but they are pushed towards ghettos of the fact that you you are seeing that you know i mean a uh, 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 a woman with her son wants to stay in uh, a society which, which is a mixed which is a mixed, mixed community society, society. Yeah. yeah which is a mixed community society because she wants her kid her son who is in 12th standard to get a, a, a pluralistic perspective you know right. an indian perspective but she's been pushed out and she's been asked to go to some ghetto right so the point is that who is ghettoizing muslims right and then of course when the muslim population uh, grows in some ghettos you know then it becomes pakistan then it becomes you know uh, all kinds of labels are all kinds given. of 
yeah stereotypes and all kinds of things are talked about them right and 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 then then yeah. interestingly politically that particular space becomes uh, a muslim seat for instance right or or right. Uh, you know i mean that that comes down to a very significant uh, question of the continuous decline of muslims uh, representation in political institutions right. i mean this this under representation is there in all institutions it's not just only political no every institution, institution right from the judiciary yeah, to the bureaucracy education, to academics etc. academics of course you know i can talk about that that you know delhi university delhi university where we have around 4 to 5000 of appointments and we did not see uh, you know muslims even 2% or i don't know i mean some survey needs to be done not more than uh, 2% so so just imagine the kind of uh, alienation yes. which which uh, and it's very demoting for muslim students for muslim job seekers you know uh, just imagine what way they might be thinking always thinking that you know they 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 may not right. get a job so why to study why to do work etc right? right so yeah now uh, let me uh, you know move on to this particular election you have also written in the article that i am referring to you had said you know that uh, the 2024 elections has been uh, you know was more uh, virulent was more communal uh, than the 2014 and 2019 elections you know why would you say that because the bjp's agenda has not really changed so why would you say that 2024 was more communal more incendiary than the previous two elections you know which caught the bjp a uh, uh, yeah. uh, definite majority two things you know i mean one of course is 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 it has come from the prime minister right right uh, and of course uh, this is something which is which is unbelievable that that the that the sitting prime minister you know uh, would say that uh, and would directly attack so the second is that there was a direct attack it wasn't an indirect reference but it was a direct attack on muslims uh, that all muslims are infiltrators right i mean it's something right, which, which 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 uproots them right i mean infiltrators and the second there was that they have more children you know whereas yeah, the latest maybe fertility rates uh, yeah yeah so i mean which is not true right which is not true that they are uh, that they are baby producing factories or even for for that matter polygamy is also not true i mean uh, the manner That's in right. which it has been uh, uh, talked about so it was incendiary because it came out of you know the whole election campaign was going on on the issues of uh, jobs and uh, inflation and you know Right. Uh, social justice but suddenly in the second phase we hear these uh, you know remarks coming up right which was really uh, a shock okay. for most no no let me let, let me ask you a question which emerges out of this question you know that this this election campaign was more communal than the ones in 2014 and 2019 in 2024 the bjp has got the lowest seats compared to 2014 and 2019 whereas you are saying you know that the victories in 2014 and 19 were the result of less communal uh, campaign so would you say that here is a silver lining or you know as i would say you know there is a ray of light that more communal campaigning did not result in the bjp winning more seats so this is actually the sign of hope that you are actually talking about yeah yeah so so i think uh there is there is definitely there is a sign of hope uh, across you know right. uh, because we we have seen uh, the last 10 years there has been backsliding of democracy you know some sort of people are calling it as an electoral autocracy and 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 lots of uh, i mean authoritarianism seeped in uh, the consensus democracy would always follow in terms of consensus so the consensus building exercise has gone away within within the i think within within the council of ministers so within the government there is I, we don't see any sort of consensus there uh, so so there is some sort of a hope in terms of when we saw the uh, the results that you mm -hmm. know bjp is losing a uh, uh, lot of seats in uttar pradesh particularly in faizabad and he himself right. the prime minister was trailing behind so all these indicate that yes i mean uh, still we can gain ground 
right? Still, democracy can gain ground. So all that what had been backslided, you know, would again sort of come back, you know. So so uh, uh, and 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 the credit goes to people of India, right? Because mm-hmm. I understand, you know, if you look into the history, I understand that India essentially is is not the way in which how BJP projects it is, right? India is not a hate mongering society, right? We love each other. There is there is a lot of, lot of diversity. No? We we there is a peaceful coexistence. We exchange a lot of lot of uh, culture with each other. Look at you know I mean, I mean I don't have to. There's a uh, lot of lot of uh, literature on this that how in India, uh, India is rich in terms of its culture, right? As far mm. as cultural exchange is concerned, you know. Uh, so many festivals, so many food, so many you know different varieties of uh, of, of of cultural programs. So I think I think there's lot, lot to learn from India. Costumes, uh, of course, right. So I I think I I I, I think uh, we need we need some somebody some leader you know who can who can put it. And I'm I'm I'm, I'm happy that this was done by the opposition because they did not. Uh, countered, you know, the communal remarks by the by right. the BJP in the campaign was not countered by the similar cam- communal remarks, right? So it, it they they showed Muslims also, you know, if if uh, you know uh, the Muslims, they showed a lot of resilience in terms oh. of uh, responding to the remarks which were made during the political campaigns. So it is. It is Muslims that in is, India, you know, are very resilient to such kind of. I mean, they have taken it as that. Uh, okay, you know, I mean, this is. But the whole country is not like that. It's coming from a small section of the society, but the whole country is not like that. Right. And, you know. You know. Let me ask you. You were talking about the declining uh, representation of Muslims in in virtually every uh, you know arm of the state, including the uh, legislatures. Uh, this this the 18th Lok Sabha has 26 Muslim MPs. Uh, even the opposition parties, to which you were saying that they rightfully flagged the issues which are communal and they they campaigned against it. But when it comes to choosing Muslim candidates, even the opposition appears to be diffident. My question is that not what why they are doing it. We all know the reason that they are worried about backlash from the Hindus. How does it affect the Muslim mind? At the fact that even those parties which are professing inclusive politics hesitate in fielding Muslim candidates. Yeah, uh, uh, one is of course that the Muslims uh, they think that it's very difficult for them to lead, right? So they they have uh, made themselves comfortable about the fact that they would only vote, right? Okay. So, so, so therefore, the leadership question within Muslims is very difficult. I mean, I've, I've been discussing about the fact that it's very difficult okay. for Muslims to, to, to lead, right? Even in the campaigns, if you see in the political campaigns, the star campaigners of all political parties, right? Yes. You will not find Muslims there. Very few right? Muslims. Yes. One or two, very few Muslims very who few. are very well known across. Right. Very, very few. And in fact, they do not campaign so vigorously also they go to very specific place where people know them right so so therefore it is very clear that muslims in the leadership space they are excluded right it's very difficult for them right because of variety of reasons one of course is what you said is about the backlash which goes to the whole idea of winnability right Mm -hmm. so so that that is there uh, but yes, yes, Muslims are looking. I mean, representation doesn't mean that Muslims' representation should be Muslims, right? right? Only representation means that in anyone, the leader must talk, do things on behalf, right? On behalf of the electorate. But and in if Muslims they need social justice, you know, they must speak or do things on behalf of them. Right. For example, lynching. You will not hear any leader speaking, you know, right. on behalf of Muslims. Right. It's complete silence. For for last three, four days or five days, you know, this every day I can see, you know, not on the front page, but somewhere, you know, the 
lynching issue and some discrimination issue is always coming up. Yes, right? we are. To, we were talking about it that there have been incidents in Chhattisgarh yes. where people but have been killed. I have not heard. Place. I have not heard even from the opposition, right, talking about that. Why, after all, this takes place? Bulldozer justice. Nobody has talked about. Right, eleven eleven homes have been demolished. Nobody has talked about this, right? So I think right. I think it is here where where the alienation sets in. When when the leaders do not talk on behalf of of uh, right. Muslims when they are being of persecuted, the victims. yeah, when they are victims, when they are being persecuted, they do not talk on behalf of them because they consider they consider Muslims as a less citizen. Right. right, or perhaps new Dalits. You can talk about. You know, they are considered to be as less uh, less citizen, right? right? Half citizen, less citizen, doesn't matter, right? Or perhaps if they speak, they might lose their own ground, right? So it's it's you know the polarization politics have overtaken the civil society, in a sense that you know people are just just you know uh, they have placed themselves in the camps, either this camp or that camp. And and the relationship between the camp is of rancor, of animosity. You know, okay. so so that is the so, that is so the reason why it becomes so difficult to speak on behalf of those who are being persecuted. So let me ask you: that is all that what is happening about alienation, about vilification, and pushing them out into ghettos? Is this making the Muslim community more politically homogeneous than what they used to be? Uh, you know, it is a fact that. The right wing has always campaigned against, you know, what they call the the Muslim vote bank, which they say has been appeased by the Congress Party and other political parties that do not share the Hindutva ideology. Uh, but uh, you know, how would you uh, explain that? That to what extent, rather, that's a better way of asking: Is the Muslim community now politically homogeneous in terms of the electoral choice? Yeah, so uh, uh, of course, you know where you have these two blocks, NDA versus UPA. So I think right. I have seen Muslims have a have have a clear choice, right? That they would not vote for BJP, they would vote for UPA. You see, the candidate which would defeat the BJP candidate, so they would vote for that. You know, uh, particularly you know when you have when you have a multi-cornered. Uh, 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 election and contest, mm -hmm. right? So there, there they would vote for that candidate, you know, which is going to defeat the BJP candidate, right? Because which, who, you know, who stands the best chance of defeating the who stands the best candidate. chance? And there, actually, you know, why homogeneity? They they would like to vote homogeneously, but the homogeneity gets sort of you know uh, disturbed uh, because because of the last moment propaganda that goes on and within the muslim camp muslims uh, they are they are of course well lit society they are closed society you know for variety of reasons you know not just because of religion but there are variety of reasons they are closed closed because they are as i said that they get ghettoized so therefore they become closed knit right? and always so, been targeted on the basis of their religious identity i think that's a very so so yes yes so the religious oppression is always there and to which muslims they take it as as the prime oppression right that because they are muslims therefore they are targeted and 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 that mm -hmm. is that has been documented you know i mean if you if you look, if you read india discrimination report right uh, by i think 20 in 2022 came from oxfam uh, it also talked about muslims discrimination so in mm -hmm. jobs Right, they are discriminated because they are seen as Muslims. Right, so because they are Muslims, they are discriminated in a sense that they are hired last and fired first. So that's the way how how the report described about the Muslims' faith. So so Muslims, you know, one thing is clear that they they vote strategically. So for them, you know, and I I as I said in the article itself, that they do not have much choice. You know, unlike their fellow uh, citizens, you know, they do not have much choice, in a sense that they would not go for a candidate who is uh, good in terms of leader or, or in terms of uh, their approach towards people. They only go for a candidate which would defeat the BJP, right? Now that that is that is all about their voting pattern. So I think the voting behavior 
of Muslims is slightly different, and they they vote homogeneously, right? Okay. I mean, uh, 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 for for if if you go by CSDS data also, yes. right? So eight percent, let's say eight percent of Muslims they vote for BJP, the BJP, right? But this eight percent perhaps might be very scattered across the country, right? Uh, uh, which I, I mean, of course, I, I think that it's slightly extrapolated or slightly exaggerated. Uh, I haven't come across Muslims uh, as an insider. Whenever I talk to Muslims, I mean, I haven't come across any Muslim who say that you know. They would, would you, you know, I'll, I'll I'll pause you here. Would you say that when a surveyor approaches a Muslim and asks that which party did you vote for, it is possibly the fear? Which says that let me Absolutely. say BJP so that there no harm comes to me. Is that absolutely. the way? Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Because you know, because that 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 the fear that the fear of being targeted right, right. later on. I mean, this is what just look at this. After verdict, they are targeted because they did not vote for right. BJP. Exactly. That's that's one of the major reasons. They would not get support from their leaders because they are Muslims, as 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 uh, you know, MPs have talked about. Giriraj Singh has talked about that they would not help Muslims, right? So I think, I think you know, these are the fears, and that fear get expressed when the surveyor comes and asks, right? Uh, so it is a closed knit society. Somebody who is an insider, you know, who can do immersive survey. So those who can do immersive survey, you know, can actually know. So I think I think CSDS must have Muslims uh, surveyor when when they go to Muslim area, right? And they must uh, first say that you know I'm so and so, and therefore I have come actually to uh, understand and make uh, okay. statements that would empower you. It's not a question of survey, but it's basically largely and this is not at the end of the day. Yeah, yeah. So then they would come out. Yeah, then they would come out with with uh, the re real picture. So, anyways, I mean, even if we take like let's say, uh, because CSDS says that in Gujarat it's almost thirty percent of Muslims who voted for BJP, twenty nine thirty percent uh, of uh, the Muslims. Of the Muslims, yeah, twenty nine thirty percent. Or that means that uh, three Muslims uh, out of ten are voted Every for 10. BJP, which I think is not true, right? Which I think it's. I think we need to check on all these. Uh, uh, things. I mean, I mean, uh, uh, there is no reason why they would, uh, because they are also get wise. And and in Delhi, for example, in Delhi elections, I read that you know, 14% of uh, Muslims, you know, they 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 voted for uh, BJP candidates, which again I think 14 is again exaggerated. The national average they say 8%, which again I think it's slightly exaggerated, right? Uh, <clears throat> I mean, of course, you know, they would say the upper caste Muslims, for instance, you know, they 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 can uh, vote for vote for. Uh, I mean, I, I I don't think that they are going to vote for BJP because of the fact that the right. security issue also also affects them. You know, be it upper caste or lower caste or or whatever, right? So therefore, uh, so, I think I think I think when you compare it with non-Muslim categories, right? Uh, they are more homogeneous, right, okay. and less heterogeneous. That's what my answer. Right. Uh, there has been one point, you know, which I want to say before we actually uh, wind up this conversation. You know, just ask you that the government has actually publicized that there are five people from the minority community in the government, in the Council of Minister, Ministers. Uh, two Sikhs, two Buddhists, and one Christian. That is the kind of a breakdown which has been provided. There is no Muslim who is a minister in the Council of Ministers. What does this convey? Well, I mean, it's again part of that larger Hindutva project, right? That uh, within the religious minorities also, what we have seen over the years, that, uh, 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 for example, Jains, Buddhist, right, even Sikhs also, right? They get more, uh, you know, benefits space. or perhaps they have space. Yes, yes. They they get more space when compared to Muslims, right? And and therefore they become the torch bearer, flag bearer for for this whole idea right. that look we are doing for religious minorities, right? So the 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 target is of course Muslim, right? So okay. mus the target is Muslims exclusion because that's the project Hindutva project and that's how right. you know Islamophobia is worked upon, right? I mean, you you, you 
the, you have seen islamophobia but is there any janophobia <laughs> is there is there any uh, sikophobia there's nothing of that sort right? right have you ever seen any any uh, other religious minorities religion has been targeted the manner in which uh, so christians have been christian uh, places christians of worship of have been attacked yeah. churches yes. have been so, vandalized yeah. yeah yeah but but we have seen the prime minister uh, quite often visits he, he prime minister hugs the pope right right but he has never hugged any 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 muslim cleric right right so that that's the point which i'm trying to make is that you know okay. i mean i mean i mean for the spectacle sake only for the optics only right. you know at least you should do all so therefore muslim exclusion is very clear you know in 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 in, in the bjp mind that uh, come what may you know uh, we would not give if, uh, and they are being pushed out of the public space that's also very clear you know as far as their functions are concerned you know i mean uh, they are not they they are not allowed to offer namaz in the playground which is a right. public space right in a public park which is a public park right or for that matter there are a lot of instances you know something like for example so i i i just could not understand that how the jain communities uh, recently uh you know you must have seen that during idul uh, yes. zuha right they bought uh, goat and 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 they are making a statement that look uh, uh, the sacrifice is so uh, bad thing in in islam right it shouldn't have been there right, right. so so this is again again the hindutva uh, politics which which pits the one religious no. minority over the others Right, right, right. Now, uh, you know, given this situation in the country and given the election uh, results, what expectations would you say that the Muslim community would have from a much stronger and a much more vociferous opposition? Yeah, so it's a, I mean, of course, there is a sort of sense of uh, relief. but they are, they are, they are just watching you know i mean at times muslims feel that they have no option actually right because all of them behave in one way that's that's what the way how in which muslim think most of the time they think that you know whom to vote whom to elect you know all of them behave in the same manner right nobody comes for their rescue you know when they are being lynched or when they are being executed right. so so that is that is the psyche you know that is there but of course you know with with strong opposition and uh, 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 of course they 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 think that you know sometime may may they may raise this question and of course you know uh, they they can align with the opposition to raise their voice right because right. after all it is it is about uh, the question of uh, minority rights which are enshrined right. in the constitution so they may raise their voice in uh, along with the opposition's Uh, uh, so therefore they 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 would and and i i think that it would be in the interest of muslims you know that they must come out and sort of sort of uh, align with with those persecuted communities with the other oppressed communities about, with the other oppressed communities in fighting against the authoritarianism and and deepening you know they they must come together to deepen the democracy so if they deepen the democracy of course some of their concerns like security for example or maybe maybe right. uh, discrimination for example might get a uh, little bit of little bit of relief they might get from there right Yeah, yeah, very well put. You know that it is in the Muslim interest to deepen democracy, to collaborate with other oppressed, uh, you know, communities, and uh, one can hope that uh, there will be light at the end of the tunnel with the uh, with the elections actually uh, electing uh, the ruling uh, alliance, the coalition, with not so many seats as they had in the previous parliament, and making. a politics more competitive and if politics becomes more competitive more voices will creep in thank you very much uh, tanveer right. rajas for uh, joining us on this program it was a real pleasure to hear from you and actually being able to understand that how the muslim psyche is uh, you know reacting to the situation in the country thank you very much once again.